Welcome one more we once came back with the uh, opening of the boxes and we lift the lid. Take out from already open. And how about we take those corners? Probably only two at a time now because well I kind of like it. So we have two blind boxes. I have no idea what's in these. Neither do you. See what we have inside. What in the name of heck is this? Is this what I think it is? Is what I think it is? It is indeed a fire moth, aka Dasher. Ain't that an adorable thing? Now oh, the focus is all over the place too. Let's see if we can make the focus a bit better. But yeah, the fire mod, aka Dasher. Very speedy make. Not much in the way of weapons, but fairly speedy. I mean, I think we can duplicate, but I don't think we get it. Arctic Sheeta, I think. Let's see. Indeed, Hankyu, or originally known as the Arctic Sheeta. Ain't that adorable? Again, a pretty nice make. So maybe this is not much of a surprise or a new make, so also I've seen it. Yeah. And the dasher. Two unexpected mechs. Not anything I would have picked out on my own, which makes it fun in a way. Say, I would probably not have picked these two out on my own. Not favorite mechs by any stretch of imagination, but you know, it is what it is. Now, oh, as before. I will now set up the painting station, and for what for you it will be a brief second, but for me it will take time. <laughs> anyway, catch you later. And we're back in the painting station. Now, at first I was thinking I was going to do the paint schemes from the cards for these mechs, but they were boring. On one hand, it was, ironically enough, more clan ghost bear. On the other hand, it was some clan wolf scheme and some other ones. So instead, I decided to go deep into the weird world of. Battle take. And taking the well Clan Hell Horses Omega Galaxy, which is a grey and fire themed one. I mean you can't go wrong with that. Flames on a mech. It's cool. And that's the statement for the day. Flames on a mech, they're cool. So we start off with a simple uh, uniform grey, which is a dark bluish grey for both mechs. And then we're going to go into some Abomination Gore, I think it's called. Then we have all the paints listed. Not as we go through them, but I'm going to list them all on the side so we can see which paint to use this time. Now, we're going to speed through this because there's not much to talk about the mechs per se. I don't have any personal relationship with these mechs, but... Um, as I was before, these are not mechs I would have picked on my own. And that is why I go a bit crazy with the paint scheme. But let me still talk about the process here, because basically, for all intents and purposes, I am stuck in this mindset where I can't really be as creative with the clan mechs as I can with the Inner Sphere mechs. Because with the Inner Sphere, Inner Sphere, Inner Sphere mechs, you have a more or less unlimited amount of mercenary companies. And they aren't exactly known for subtle colors. So with them I feel I can do pretty much anything I want. The clans though, they don't do that. They don't do mercenary work. They don't do that sort of thing. They have a strict regiment for colors. So I feel a bit more locked in there. So 
basically what I did this time was look for one of, some of the most wildest color combinations I can find. And I, this just felt like a fun challenge. Now, a lot of paints I've seen for these, they either have the classic flame look, which you can find on American hot rods and those sort of things, or they have a um, flame gradient. I'm going to go in a bit of a different direction than that. Because what I'm going to do is a more stifled flame, moving flame feel. And um, we do this by say, putting on a base of fairly deep red. I got to love this red, it's a very nice red. Hard to not like it. And then we're going to work in uh, oranges and yellows in a uh, random pattern, making sure to get sort of a slight sense of flame. Basically, the idea of this is, as I always say, to look good while looking down on the tabletop. These are not competition grade mates. I can't do competition grade, as I mentioned before. But the, the, the idea is to have this sort of nice, still fairly basic paint scheme. One you can strive to get out of a quick, quick paint job. Now, as you move forward now, a few for some time we're gonna do two things differently and uh, on one hand these mechs are now they're gonna be opening boxes in a pair of twos until the boxes are gone which is like three more openings we're gonna paint the mechs like this on uh, for the Saturday but we are also going to once the uh, uh, Gunsberg Big cat is done. We are going to paint one mech for the Saturday video, and we're going to paint one for the Tuesday stream. So you're going to get mechs for both those. I didn't do this today because with Eastern, we're a bit off kilter and everything's been weird. So I didn't even think I was going to be able to get this video done today because, well, I thought I was going to go out. But we come back home early. So I'm putting this together now. But yeah, that is why. I did a bit more of a speedy paint job because all that is done today. Sorry. Things are not always going to be super detailed. But yeah, so the idea here is just a quick flow of mind paint scheme. And as you can see, this red is really red. It doesn't look that, that red on the bottle. It's more of a grungy red on the bottle. But it turns out surprisingly well, actually. Which is nice. Because, you know, sometimes you kind of have to do that. Just go with the flow. Just let it flow through you. It's also a bit of a release of pressure, the fact that I can actually get a hold of more mechs now. Because before I said I could do, before I wasn't sure if I was going to get a hold of more mechs. It's like, how are we going to do this? But, now that I know I can get a hold of more mechs, I'm a bit more open to experimenting. Yeah, we actually had a bit of a darker red now, just so the base get a bit of a color difference there. I should probably go with a more black base on our own lines, looking back at it now, but uh, I still think this turns out fairly well. You'll see by the end of it, they, they turn out fairly well. And it wasn't that long a paint job either, it's like, how about an hour? About an hour of painting. So it's kind of nice. But yeah, basically what I'm doing is going and putting in random blobs of orange because A, this orange is very see-through, very clear, very difficult to work with and so it needs to be globbed on and also instead of painting individual flames because I think it looks a bit weird on these they're not any good big flat surfaces to do that on I say do this splotchy feel that by the end will have a sensation of flame I think at least I hope you, you might disagree um, so yeah because the cheetah on its original the original idea was to do the paint scheme from the card and apart from the bear scheme which I've done a lot of it's just basically black with sort of this fog motif of differencing lines of white. I mean, that is kind of cool. 
that is something we can do at some point, but not today. Today we do fire mix, flame and ruin, because it's fun, because it's Easter. And around here we have this really interesting idea of setting fire bonfires. I'd like to take one guess why. But like I said, it's a Christian idea, so I can let's guess why. It's about witches. Yeah. So anyway. It felt appropriate to do mix on fire. Also, I saw this crazy um, people guard uh, Titan, not Titan, Knight. That was also set on fire and stuff. At some point, I want to be able to reach that level of painting. But it also was pointing out that a uh, Imperial Knight is like seven times the size of these guys. So yeah, bring out some of the good old null oil. You have, if you do great, at some point you have to ping out the null oil. You just have to. So yeah, as I said, we basically put on some dark reds and then we start building the reds up. And you can go crazy with this. You can go pretty much as deep as you want in this case. If you have the eyesight for it, you can't even go in and paint actual flames. But I don't have the eyesight for that, so we don't do that. There's other excuses, I know, but I can't feel it's worth. It's a, it has a worth the knowing of your limitations, and working with those limitations. Because as much as I want to, there are certain limitations to what I can paint. And um, if I try to fight that, I'm just gonna end up miserable and sad and angry, and that is not gonna be good. So I try to work with my limitations. I think you should too. This is important. This, this is also a hobby. It's fun. This is not something you do. Well, you could do as a job too. And if you do that as a job, great for you. But if you do this as a hobby, try to remember to have fun while you do it. Because it's way too easy these days to just get caught up in the whole doing thing and forgetting the fun bit. And um, then it's all of a sudden a job, like not hobby. And it's definitely not recreation all of a sudden. It's just a job. Now, if you like putting in a insane amount of work into each model, that is great. As long as it's fun for you. If you're doing it just to do it, again, I don't really know if that's a good idea. Take care of yourself. Have fun. Have fun with the things you do. Now, I've already gone over what the kind of mix these are and the, my position on the clans. So that's a thing. But if you want my actual opinion on the clans from a lore, spe lore perspective, I'm going to start putting up a few videos on Patreon. I know that sounds weird, but one of the reasons they I put up my opinions on the clans, we are going to go into subjects that is going to get me demonetized faster than I can say. Well, the things I can't say. So we're not going to do that. But if anyone are interested in hearing my more my takes on the lore around this game, I'm putting a series of that up on Patreon for my level 2 and level 3 Patreons. So that's going to be a thing that's going to be coming over the days too. Not super soon, but soonish enough. Because as I say I like to talk about lore too, but the content on YouTube because YouTube gets angry at me when I do that because I use words and bring politics into it. You can't really avoid not being not doing that because there's a lot of politics in Battletech. So that's the thing that's gonna happen. I don't know exactly when it's gonna happen. You're gonna let you know here when this happens, and if you want to see that, well that is gonna be a thing. I'm thinking about what I should do for the Patreon is make it worth if you subscribe to it. And I think that could be a thing. My take on the lore. If you want to read through the lore, I'm also considering putting up some. Well, audio books are not probably overstatement, but reading a few. A few readings of things. But like, there's some short stories you get at the starting game, for example, that make. That's a troll, by the way. Um. What was there? Well, it's not so drying, I was just looking at it. It was 
Is it someone who's been painted on the side? It's for fun. If you want to make, want to look at that, then great. But those videos do poorly, very poorly. So I usually don't put them up. It's sort of fun. But yeah, as you can see now, we're getting into we have now applied the play, applied the flame, the flame pattern, and a sort of burning, melty kind of look. Now just putting silvery weapons because silvery weapons makes it easier to see. And as I said, the idea is that these are going to be actually used on tabletop. Tabletop, so it's easy to see the weapons if they're silvered. Coherency. Cohesion. Not coherency, cohesion. It's a theme. Always a good thing to have. But yeah, that is most of things that are going on with this. Actually, as I said, we're still trying to figure out a good way to get a better camera in there. Because like, this, this, this is a bit suboptimal. It's not great, but it is what it is. We're also going to get some better lighting because the lighting is horrid. I don't like it, but the things we worked on, maybe by the time, by the time summer comes around, we might have saved up enough to get that done. Because believe it or not, things are expensive these days. And a good light setup. Actually, I need to find a good frame setup first because I need a frame for my desk to actually hang these things from. And that has been difficult. And now, before I ask, we're not painting. And the cockpits on these. I will maybe at some point, but not today. So yeah. Basically just going in, making sure we get all the vent ports for jump jets and stuff painted. I keep forgetting those most of the time. Remember them this time. And as I noted before, if you are um, interested in influencing what we do in the channel um, there is a um, patreon tier for that again i hate plug plugging things like that but i kind of want to have a bit more um, control over ideas and such because sometimes people have really weird ideas so yeah if you want to influence the channel and what we paint and how we paint it patreon is a good place to start and um, we are closing in on 200 subscribers, which is also great. And we have a bit left. We are at 160 now. But that is still great. And um, yeah, until next time. Stay safe. Be kind. And do, do play fair. Bye.